Hey basketball coaches, today I'm going to talk to you about the 1-2-2 full court press defense. Let's get down to the clipboard and let's check this out. Okay, so in the 1-2-1-1, there's two different ways that coaches like to set it up. The first way is a more aggressive way where we're going to have player one, our fastest player up front with players three and two at the free throw line, making it look very similar to a diamond one, two, one, one. And then we're going to have players four and five, our bigger, usually slower players being at half court. There's also a not as aggressive way where players four and five will slip back, players three and two will then slip back between the three point line and the half court line, and then we would have player one up front again being our fastest player. Personally, you could actually run this both different ways, or both ways I should say, in every game. So you could even start the game more aggressive, have these players closer all at the other team's half court. As soon as, let's say, they get an inbounds pass to player two, we would then have player one and two double teaming, trying to force him towards the sideline, having player three slip into the middle of the key and player four dipping down. At this point, we would now have a couple of different options. Usually when there's a full court press, teams teach and coaches teach their team to reverse the ball back around. But by having player four dip down to guard this player, we can then guard that player tight enough to pick off that pass. Now you may be saying, well, just do a very long pass to player five. Well, you could, but when player four dips, we can move player five over covering both players in the back. Now we are forcing a player who may not be one of their better ball handlers and force him to now handle the ball. Now at this point, we would have player three go up and guard player four and player one would then reverse back to then take player three's old spot. At this point in time, we can now have player five and four go back to their spots. We need to have our players run super quick on this. This is why I wouldn't be running the super aggressive version of the one, two, two the whole entire game or else you'll be going all 12 players deep for your substitutions. And then from there, we would have player four to either pass or try and dribble towards that sideline. And I can say right now, if your team is playing this correctly, that pass is not going to be there. So at this point in time, somebody is going to try and go towards the middle. And because player three starts going over towards this side, I want player one to still cover player one until player two moves down to cover player one's rotation and player five starts slipping down because now I want to see player one now come back and take the reverse away from player four. Now at this point in time, we're going to be having player five covering the middle, player two covering the middle, player four covering the long pass. And of course, even though player three may be wide open or a player may be wide open over here, we still need player five to be able to be quick enough to pick this off. And at this point, we would hope to have player four caught on that sideline. If these two players who are trying to double player four towards the sideline get beat by player four or a pass goes to the middle, personally, I want you to do one of two things. Set up right away in your half court zone or go and play your half court defense, which may be a zone or a man to man defense. Now for the not as aggressive 1-2-2, two, two, what we can do here is when player 2 gets that ball, usually teams inbound the ball to the corners. Uh, it's usually something that I don't like having my team do, but it's something that teams do have happen quite often. At this point in time, I would want player 2 to try and force player 2 towards the sideline. Player 4 is going to pop in, but I want player 1 to stay on that inbounds player. This way, there's no reverse pass out. 
However, if player two dribbles towards the middle to try and beat player two up the middle, I want player one to step back and then defend that drive. Now he's going to pass over to player four if he was smart, and we want player one to go back on single coverage with player four. We essentially want these three players up front to be in single coverage until that ball starts either being attacked into the middle or when they start getting close to the sideline. So let's say we have player four dribbling closer towards the sideline. Now at this point in time, we want player three to be backing up, but still staying close to the middle, but close enough to the sideline where he can jump and double team. So as soon as player 4 gets close to that sideline, meanwhile I want player 2 to be moving towards the middle, I want as soon as player 4 goes outside of that 3 point line, what I call the side 3 point line extended up to half court, as soon as he steps outside of that line, that 3 point line, I want to see player 3 jump and start double teaming. Meanwhile, I want to see player 5 being at half court, player 4 being at half court, and player 2 covering the reverse pass. We have gone from a very lazy defense where we have sagged off back away from them to now jumping them. A lot of coaches may call this their jump defense and that's because we've sagged off. We've given them a chance to dribble and now we jump at their chance of being along the sideline. And that's the two different ways how you could run the 1-2-2. Two, two. Now, I understand that a couple of different coaches may have a couple of different tweaks in the zone, but that's generally the ways I run the 1-2-2, two, two, and it's been successful with myself. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. Make sure to go check out the unbeatable basketball zone defense down in the description below, and I'll see you guys again next time.